Hello, my name is Horkon and welcome back to another little tutorial on the Empress Effects Zoya multi-effects pedal and patchable digital synthesizer in a little box. Um, yesterday, in fact, I made another video about how to snap to any scale, uh, to a scale you could define yourself. And I realized as I was uploading the video that there actually is an easier way to do this. It's not as flexible for all circumstances, but for most circumstances, it is actually easier to do. So it's going to be quite similar to uh, the previous one, and I'll just run through this quickly now. Um, I will presume that you haven't seen the previous one, actually. Um, but of course, if you want to watch it, you can um, watch a link up here. Now, even though that this video might actually make that one redundant for your purposes, it's still a useful video if you want to see how to work with comparators, uh, for instance. Right, so that said, let's get into the new one. So, <clears throat> what is the idea? Okay, so we want to take an input, a note input or a value input, and turn it into note values within a defined scale that we define ourselves. Um, and we've got a page here that has a scale definition of 12 values. Uh, and unlike what I did last time, I thought of it slightly differently now. Uh, I thought that these 12 values could represent the 12 notes of the chromatic scale. And then you take each of these and decide which new note is going to be represented by that particular note in the scale. And of course, on the Zoya, it starts on the A. So uh, the first note here is an A. And then the next one would have been an A sharp. And the next one would have been a B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, etc. But this scale definition here tells the Zoya, with a little bit of programming, which I'll get back to, how to reinterpret each of the 12 notes of the chromatic scale. So it tells it now that an A0 is going to be interpreted as an A, uh, which is the same. It tells it that the A sharp is going to be an A as well. It tells it that the B is going to be an A. It tells it that the C is going to be a C. The C sharp is going to be a C. Uh, the D is going to be a D. D sharp is going to be a D. E is going to be E, etc. Until we get to G and finally, for some reason, there was a little glitch. So it seemed I had to make the last note here uh, one octave up from the base note um, or the fundamental, and that seemed to work fine. So, which means G doesn't get a very big range to snap to, but it still snaps to a G as well. So that's your minor pentatonic scale uh, or a minor pentatonic scale. Um, if I gave this last one a value of G, um, it did some strange thing when it played. So I'll, I'm gonna. It seemed to work fine when I put it to an, an A1, so one octave above the, the fundamental. Right. <clears throat> so these are the note definitions. Uh, so basically, respelling the original scale input. Um, and now instead of putting them into comparators like we did last time, um, or putting the um, the inputs, yeah, before I get to the comparators. So we have an input note value. This is where the value comes from that is going to be interpreted by the uh, by this scale snapper. Uh, this comes in here. And at the moment, it's coming from, um, from a sequencer that just runs through a set of chromatic notes through the scale. Uh, again, starting on on A because it's uh, that is the base base note really on the Zoya. So, and it takes the output value of that. Well, what we need to do to to reinterpret notes, of course, is we have to think of it within one octave. So, the way this works is the first digit of a CV value that is a note value is going to be the octave it is in. 
So the point three, it says the dot the point three, that three is the third or rather fourth octave up. And then the three last digits are the ones that define the actual note value within that octave. Where zero 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 is A and um zero eight three is uh, A sharp, etc. So it just divides that range of um of zero point of 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 yeah of of thousand uh, into to twelve equal parts. So, in order to get the actual note values and ignore the octaves, we have to remove the first digit. And the way we do that is to take the output of the um, of this value module, which is has the the um, the note value that we are transposing or quantizing to the new scale. Uh, it goes into an in switch with 10 channels. And the way an in switch works is it takes the range of 0 to 1, the whole CV range, the whole positive CV range, divides it equally between each channel, which is um, so 1 divided by 10. And when it gets a, a value of 0 0.2, three something, that means it will go to channel four. Because the first channel is selected when you have a value of zero to 0 0.1, the second when you have a value of 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, etc. So this will select channel four, which has an output value, or in this case an input value actually. The, the in, in switch has a certain number of inputs, and then the channel selector is what selects which value goes to the output, the single output. So these ones have values of 0, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. The idea is that it will send out its value. And this is the value we want to subtract from the note value that we start with. So we can get rid of the first decimal. And this is sent into an inverter which changes it to a minus, so it's 0 0.3 becomes minus, oh, sorry, uh, minus 0 0.3, and that is added to into this value module, which also gets an input from the initial note value. So you get the initial note value minus the result of what comes through this switch, which should be the same as the first decimal, and then you have a value that is between 0 0.0 and 0 0.1. Now, instead of running this through comparators, um, comparing them to the scale definition, like I did last time, uh, what you can do is, and then using that result to run another in, another in switch, what you can do is to multiply it by 10 so that the range of 0 to 0 0.1 becomes 0 to 1, and of course, as, as you know, that is the range you need to control a switch. So, I take this value here, which should be between 0 and 0 0.1, and I run it down here, and this one here has a connection strength of 250%, which means that's the same as multiplying by 2.5. And, and then I do it again here, and this has a connection strength of 200, and again, connection strength of 200. So I'm taking this number, which is between 0 and 0 0.1, multiplying by 2.5, multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2, and together that's the same as multiplying by 10. And that value, which now should be between 0 and 1 exactly, uh, or pretty much, it doesn't have to be exact, is just, uh, it only needs to be so that the right values are within the right channel. So it needs to be a little bit lower than the exact value, um, which is why the connection strength here is actually, uh, I did show that briefly, is, uh, oh, that's the wrong way to show it. I'm doing like this, 199.9 .9 instead of 200. Um, you don't want it to be too high because then it will select a channel above. So this output here goes to the channel selector of another in switch here. And because it's now been multiplied by 10, it gives 
the input here will have the whole range from 0 to 1 and select between all these channels. And then if this works the way it's supposed to, which I think it does now, um, this channel will be selected if the note value played is an A0, this one if it's an A sharp, this if it's a B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, etc. And then these inputs here take their values from from the scale definition. So in the scale definition here, we had the first uh, values were playing A's, so um, they are zeros. And then we have a C and another C and D, D, <coughs> E, 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 G. Uh, I suppose I probably could change that to a G to even it out a little bit. So, and finally an A above octave as well, which seemed to work better. Um, so, basically what it does is if you play a, an A sharp, for instance, this is a channel that is selected because the channel selector gets an input that brings it to the second channel. And then the output of this switch will be the value here, which is zero, which is defined by this set of values, which defines the scale. So the output here will be an A zero. And that is brought to the output value uh, here, which is also connected to the output of the first end switch, which means that the, remember the 0 0.3 that we removed in the beginning is now added back in. So it removes the first decimal, it multiplies the last three digits by decimals by 10. It uses those to decide which of these 12 channels in an end switch is active and the output is uh, and of course the the values from this in switch are the note values in the defined scale and the output is then added together with the octave number that we removed and that is the output of the snap to scale so the input of the snap to scale is here the output is here and this is the final note value that is sent on to other things so in this case we have sent it to an oscillator here um, that runs into a VCA uh, that is controlled by an ADSR and the node input values they come from this sequence are here which just runs through a chromatic scale um, oh. chromatic scale from uh, oh, that's an LFO there sorry that's this is where this sequencer is uh, the LFO here has the same color as the sequencer so it's easy to miss I'll just change the color of that so it's easier to see that it's something else. So this uh, LFO controls the tempo. Uh, it goes to the gate input of the sequencer. Um, and the output of the sequencer here, chromatic scale is sent to the value input that goes into the scale snap routine. Um, and the, uh, yes, the sound then goes from the VCA after being uh, activated by the ADSR to uh, uh, plate reverb effect as well. Um, now, one thing I discovered last time was if because of the way the signal is taken out and recalculated and put back together again, there's a little bit of a delay in that so that if you activate the ADSR the same time as the sequencer, you get a little bit of a of an artifact, a little bit sort of a percussive artifact at the beginning of the notes here. Uh, I'll just play you now and remove the delay. So at the beginning here, you should be able to hear, I'll just put on my headphones so I can hear it myself now. That's a little bit of a percussive sound coming in right at the beginning. Now you can also hear that the It's gone into the uh, pentatonic scale. And of course, if we'd taken this directly, it would have been 
Let's do this now. And so if you edit this, uh, not edit, we actually want to, uh, we want to look at the connections. So if I remove this connection here, Now it's just the oscillator running on its own, and if you take this, so this is what the sequencer sounds like. But if we run it through the scale snap, it sounds like this. Anyway, the delay, yes. So, in order to avoid that percussive sound, still a little bit of it at 9 milliseconds there. Yeah, still, you can still hear it, but uh, the thing is, it, it just depends what you're after, how important it is that it's completely gone, um, and sometimes the artifact can actually add a bit of interest to the sound as well. It depends what you're doing. Uh, in any case, it uh, snaps to scale. Now we can redefine the scale as well. Of course, um, I was thinking maybe giving this one a G as well. And of course, now you could also um, do other values than your normal tuning. So I want this to be 38.5. alternate tunings as well with the same method. So there you have it, a much simpler way to actually snap to scale. Um, uh, it works really well. So basically what you do is define what each of the 12 chromatic notes are supposed to be changed to and then the patch changes it for you. Um, and of course this makes it a lot easier to, um, as long as you're working with uh, 12 note scales of, or sort of a 12 note musical scale as a starting point, like all Western music basically. Um, yeah. So I hope you found that useful. Um, probably a lot easier to, to do and to wrap your head around than the previous version. And uh, this one is easy to patch up yourself. Um, if you do have any questions, um, anything at all about this, how it works, uh, please leave a note. I will work on this more because I want to make a version as well where you can um, uh, select between different types of scales. Um, you can set a different root note um, as a sort of set of selections. So you have a sort of scale select page uh, where you can select between different, uh, like your major and your minor and your, your pentatonic and your major pentatonic and your Egyptian and your Arabian or whatever scale, Chinese, Japanese scales that you want to use uh, with all the different intervals um, and your Ionian and Aeolian and all those ones as well, the Mixolydian. Um, and then, um, and of course, which note is the fundamental, because that's a simple transposition from A. Um, so perhaps you'd want to select a set where you actually, the first set setting is a C, and then you have the other fundamental notes. Because um, it would make it quite easy to use this flexibly within a patch where you just select your scale and your, and your fundamental, and then it will snap to that scale using this method without any further changes needed. Um, so basically what that will require is um, to have, to think of these as um, intervals rather than as notes themselves. So you define the scales based on the intervals from the A0 and um, then you have different sets of these for the different scales. 
and you select which one is the active one that is sent to to the in switch here uh, and of course if you watch my tutorials you already know how to do this because you know how to switch between different selections and uh, and things like that so um that's a, a little challenge for you if you'd like to do that yourself see if you can make a uh, a patch where you switch between different scales. So, uh, in any case, I will make one myself as well at some point and uh, probably make a video about it because I do enjoy doing that. So, if you like watching this, please leave a like, uh, share, comment, subscribe, all those things people do on YouTube, or so I have been told. And remember that on the Zoya, it is uh, the limit is your imagination and the CPU. So, you can do whatever you want. It's amazing what you can do with this little thing. Right. So um, thanks for watching and goodbye for now. Bye bye.